Welcome back. In this section, we are going to explore how the electrical impulse of the conduction system causes something known as the cardiac cycle. And we're going to go into great detail about the cardiac cycle so you can understand how the heart is functioning. So as opposed to the path, if you were a red blood cell of going from the right atrium to the tricuspid valve, to the right ventricle, to the lungs, coming back, the left atrium through the mitral valve, to the left ventricle, out through the aortic valve, that's not how the heart contracts. It doesn't do right atrium, then right ventricle, then left atrium, then left ventricle. What happens is both atria contract simultaneously as that impulse travels through them simultaneously. And then when they contract, whatever blood is in the atrium moves into both ventricles. And then as that impulse travels down through the bundles into the Purkinje cells, the two ventricles are going to contract at the same time, moving the blood into the pulmonary trunk and the ascending aorta. So the pace of this is always set by a pacemaker, which normally is that sinoatrial node. And this is why the resting heart rate is usually a right around 70 in a range of 60 to 80, depending on your age. Now, if that pacemaker fails, then the atrial ventricular node can become a backup pacemaker, but it does not like to then impulse is nearly as fast. In fact, the rate that it likes to generate is going to be around 45 or 50 beats per minute, which is fine if you're sitting around watching an episode of Pretty Little Liars or whatever you're watching on TV, but it's not so great if you're running across campus trying to get to class on time. You are not going to be able to do that. But even the AV knows better because you're going, well, what happens if that fails too? Well, the bundles can generate um, some contractions of the ventricle on their own, but that's going to be an even slower rate, like 20 to 40. And odds are you're going to be unconscious if that's all the output you're getting out of your heart. So let's talk about a normal cardiac cycle. And so what happens is all the chambers are alternating between being contracted and then relaxing and contracting and relaxing. And you kind of get this idea because if you put your head on somebody's chest, you can hear the heart where it goes love dub pause, love dub pause. And the love dub are the sounds of the various valves snapping. Um, in part of the cardiac cycle. And then there's a big pause while the heart as an entirety is in rest. But what you'll realize is the heart, actually the only way it can work 24 seven is that it has these momentary rests 24 seven. So we have words that we're gonna start using right now and you need to incorporate it in your vocabulary. And the first word is systole. And systole means contraction. So if the atria is contra contracting, we will say atrial systole, atria are contracting, sorry, atrial systole. And if ventricles are contracting, usually we'll say ventricular systole, but if we're just saying the word systole without the adjective in front, we're talking about ventricles, because usually we're talking about cardiac output, which has to do with ventricles. But if we're talking about the atrial contraction, we will always put that word atrial systole, atria instead of in front of systole, so you're aware of we are talking about the atria. And now the word diastole means relaxation. And so when I was in medical school, the dean of our medical school named his house diastole because it was the place he went to relax after a hard day at work. You can envision this little zen-like place that you're going. So systole and diastole, go ahead and say those words to make yourself comfortable with them. So in ventricular systole, when the valves close for the ventricles to contract, the valves that are closing are going to be the tricuspid and mitral valves because the aortic and pulmonary valves need to open for ventricle, ventricular blood to exit in an upward direction. And this gives us that first heart sound, that snapping, that's the love of the love dub. Okay. 
Now you should be able to look at this picture, which was taken at the level of the fibrous skeleton of the heart. It shows all four valves. You should be able to name each of the four valves specifically based on their location. I would suggest starting with the tricuspid valve. That's the easiest, the one with the big three cusps. Okay. And then you can figure out which is the mitral, the aortic, and the pulmonary valve. But I also would pay attention that you can see some blood vessels here. And what are these blood vessels called? So in ventricular diastole, we have the second heart sound, the dub, from closure of which valves is occurring now? Because blood is leaving the atrium, okay? And entering the resting ventricles. And so all these chambers, we're gonna have the two atria contracting and the two atria relaxing at the same time. We'll have the two ventricles contracting at the same time and the two ventricles relaxing at the same time. But it doesn't go contract, relax, then contract, relax. It's a little bit more complicated than that as we shall see shortly. So I think this is a sequence of six or six slides, I think. So let's go through the events of the cardiac cycle. And for that, we have to start at rest. So the cardiac cycle is from the beginning of one contraction until the beginning of the next contraction. So we have to set up and look at what does the heart look like before it contracts? Well, all four chambers are in diastole. And if all, when all four chambers are in diastole, the tricuspid and the mitral valves are open which means any blood pool pouring into the right and left atrium will go through the tricuspid and mitral valves and immediately enter the two ventricles. So the atria do not need to contract for blood to enter the ventricles. So the valves that are closed are the aortic and pulmonary valves. So here's what the picture looks like. We can see all four chambers, the green valves are the valves that are open and the yellow valves are the valves that are closed and everything is in diastole. So blood is passively flowing directly into the ventricles. What happens first is the sinoatrial node fires and the impulse spreads across both atria as represented by the teal color of the two ventricles. What this causes to happen is atrial systole, where both atria are going to contract and completely empty any blood in them into the ventricles. So any blood that's in the heart is going to be in the ventricles. Notice the tricuspid and mitral valves are still open and the pulmonary and aortic valves are still closed. Then what's going to happen is that atrial ventricular node is going to fire and the impulse will travel down the bundle of his and go into the right and left bundle branches and arrive at the apex of the heart to start ventricular contraction. So ventricular systole is going to start at the apex. Initially, when it starts at the apex and it contracts down here, works its way up, it's pushing the blood in an upward direction, but blood is not leaving the ventricle. What is happening is, is it's causing an increase in pressure and it causes the pulmonary and mitral valves to close and the pulmonary and aortic valves are still closed. So now for a moment, all four valves are closed and the atria are in diastole at this point and the atria will remain in diastole for the events of slide four, five, and six. So the atria get a long diastole. Now this is called an isovolumetric contraction because the volume in the atria remains the same. Then what happens is the impulses continue to the Purkinje fibers all across the ventricular muscle, then all the muscle is going to contract and ventricular ejection will occur where 
the blood will push the pulmonary and aortic valves open and blood will exit the ventricles and go into the pulmonary trunk and the ascending aorta. Notice tricuspid and mitral valves are still closed because of the pressure in the ventricles and the atria are still in diastole. Then at the end of ventricular contraction, ventricular diastole will start where the ventricles will start relaxing. So the pressure in the ventricles plummets and that causes any blood that's in the ascending aorta and the pulmonary trunk to flow back down towards their valves and will close the pulmonary and aortic valves. And so this is called isovolumetric relaxation because the volume's not changing because all four valves are momentarily closed. So whatever blood got out of the ventricles got out of the ventricles and no new blood is coming into the ventricles yet. Okay. So at this point, this is where ventricular repolarization is occurring. Then, What's going to happen is once the ventricles are completely relaxed and there's no pressure in them whatsoever, then all four chambers are going to be in diastole. Meanwhile, because there's no pressure in here, remember those atria were, were in diastole and they were filling it with blood, right? Because blood was still pouring in from the superior inferior vena cava, from the coronary sinus and from the pulmonary veins. So they're full of blood. And so now they have a higher pressure than in the ventricles just because they're blood. And that pressure is going to push the tricuspid and mitral valves open. Not atrial contraction, but just the pressure from the blood in the atria pushes those valves open. And so ventricular filling starts anew as blood is exiting the atria into the ventricles. And note that we are back at the beginning because the tricuspid and mitral valves are open, the pulmonary and aortic valves are closed, and all four chambers are in diastole. And blood is entering the atria and directly flowing into the ventricles again. So, Here's your chance to do it all on one slide. So start at rest and then do your various pictures and talk yourself through it. So I need you to stop the video and make sure you understand this and bring your questions and ask me. And with that, we are done with this section on the cardiac cycle. And I'll see you shortly as we continue our exploration of all fascinating things of the park.